While we focused mainly on the left side of the heart throughout the other diagrams presented, things can and do go wrong with the right side of the heart, and it is therefore important to know what normal pressures look like on the right side and how these pressures are measured. This diagram shows the measurement of right-sided pressures via a right heart catheterization. A right heart catheterization can be used to gauge left ventricular preload as estimated by the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, or wedge pressure for short. We'll talk a bit about this here. You can use your finger to thread the catheter into the femoral vein and up into the right side of the heart. Along the way, you should inflate the balloon by tapping the inflate balloon button. You can move the catheter with the balloon inflated into the pulmonary arteries to see how the pressure changes. Here are some key points to consider as you use the diagram. The catheter has a small balloon near its tip and a pressure transducer, a kind of measuring device, just beyond the balloon. The balloon can be inflated via a small air-filled syringe, not shown here, attached to the other end of the catheter. The waveform for the measured pressure is shown on the screen toward the left side. In real life, the person threading the catheter has the pressure displayed like this on a screen. By inflating the balloon and wedging it into a small pulmonary artery to occlude the blood flow in that artery, pressure can be measured beyond the tip of the catheter. For the brief period when the balloon is wedged in the artery, there is no blood flow in that artery beyond the balloon. Without flow, there is also no pressure drop. Recall that pressure drop equals flow times resistance. No pressure drop from the balloon to the structure that the vessel leads to, that is, the left atrium. Therefore, when the balloon is wedged, the right heart catheter pressures reflect a version, albeit a time-delayed version, of the left atrial pressure. The left atrial pressure is a measure of the preload to the left side of the heart, since the left ventricle fills via the left atrium. Let's start from the beginning. As you start threading the catheter into the body, notice how central venous pressure, the pressure in the large veins leading to the heart, is normally low, less than 10 millimeters of mercury, and typically between 3 and 8 millimeters of mercury. As the catheter approaches the heart, you can already see that the pressure waveform has some variation, reflecting the pressure changes due to the contraction and relaxation of the heart. As you push the catheter farther along into the heart, you can see the pressure waveform change. The person threading the catheter can observe the waveform changes and tell the progress of the catheter. The balloon is normally inflated as the catheter enters the heart. The balloon then acts like a sail, helping guide the catheter tip along the path of blood flow. As you move the catheter into the right ventricle, you can see how the systolic pressure increases, reflecting the contraction of the heart. The right ventricle, or RV pressures, normally look like the LV pressures, only of lesser magnitude given that less pressure is needed to pump blood into the low resistance pulmonary circulation. The pulmonic valve, also called the pulmonary valve, separates the RV from the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries. Closure of this valve during diastole allows the RV pressure to fall, enabling filling of the RV. As you move the catheter into the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries, you can see the pressure waveforms change again. The pressure no longer falls as far during diastole, compared to the RV pressures. On this side of the pulmonic valve, as opposed to the RV side, the closure of the valve maintains pressure by preventing blood runoff back into the RV. If you now thread the catheter as far as you can so the balloon wedges into a small pulmonary artery, you can see the pressure drop as the balloon wedges. This wedge pressure reflects the pressure in the left atrium, time delayed a bit because of the distance, given that there is temporarily no blood flow beyond the tip of the catheter, and hence no pressure drop between there and the left atrium. The pulmonary capillary wedge pressure provides useful information. For example, it may be elevated if there is left heart failure, that is, the left side of the heart is not pumping adequately, or is doing so only at higher filling pressures. The right-sided pressures also provide useful information about blood volume via central venous pressure. This information is a bit like a gas gauge that indicates how full a car's gas tank is. For critically ill patients with unstable hemodynamics, having a right-sided catheter in place provides a useful gauge of the patient's volume status and the effects of various interventions on the cardiovascular system. The leg veins are not the only approach for right heart catheterization. The neck veins or upper chest veins can also be used. The pulmonary artery catheter with the balloon and measuring device is also called a Swan-Gantz catheter after its inventors, Drs. Swan and Gantz.